I think we are live. Hello everyone. Good morning to another session. There are still a few more people joining in. So we're going to take two or three more minutes to let, uh, let everybody join in, settle down, maybe grab a cup of coffee and then we'll start. Now, quick announcements before we start. Uh, because of a holiday in Hyderabad, we are postponing our session on HyperExecute 2 7th. You will find that notification also pinned in your chat. In addition, tomorrow there's going to be two sessions, one from one of our community contributors, Sanjay, and also on the analytics. So analytics session was scheduled to be later, but we have pre-pwned it. And our flagship, ses flagship session that was on HyperExecute has been postponed from 2nd June to now 7th June because of a holiday in Hyderabad on 2nd June. In past, we have also seen like the two sessions that happened that there has been some issues related to joining in and logging in. And uh, that has been caused mainly because of VPNs. So in companies, people were working for other companies and uh, kind of were not able to join because of VPN restrictions either try to turn off the VPN and join from a normal Wi-Fi network or maybe if possible can attend to the mobile devices. In the meantime, how's the day going so far, Shantanu? Pretty early morning for us. Hi, Mother. Yes, it is pretty early morning <laughs> for us, <laughs> but I think it's going to be a good day. We're going to have a lot of folks here, and mobile app testing is something that I've been meaning to talk about for a long time as well. Just to highlight, we have uh, gone and get a lot of questions. Uh, mobile testing was one of the favorite topics to discuss in last two sessions as well. Be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> sure, definitely. Good morning, everyone who's joining. Feel free to use the chat option and the Q&A option to add in your questions beforehand if you want. Awesome. I think a lot of people are already joined in. So again, well, allow, well, allow me to welcome you all to the day three of Control Plus T Testathon. Uh, we had two sessions so far, both pretty exciting. One by uh, also on cross browser testing and one by our external speaker, Daniel Knott. You will be able to watch those replays past two sessions when you click on the view schedule, uh, view schedule button over above. Again, Thank you, the Essential team, for hosting us and really appreciate everyone taking the time out, joining us for the sessions. And I really look forward to the uh, today's and tomorrow's and day after tomorrow's, all the sessions that are going to happen for next two, three, two, two to three days. Uh, and again, wanted to announce that we have postponed our second June session to 7th June because of a holiday. And uh, we have pre pwned one of our sessions that was happening on analytics uh, day, uh, to 1st June. So tomorrow there would be two sessions, one from our community contributor uh, Sanjay and also on the Lambda test analytics features. So with that said, today joining me is Shantanu Wali. Shantanu is one of the product managers who lead the overall mobile ecosystem that we have in Lambda test and he will be walking us through the how you can perform your manual and automated mobile app testing using Lambda test on simulator simulators and real devices. Uh, Shantanu, over to you. Thank you so much Madhut, for that. Hi everyone uh, and welcome and good morning. So uh, without further ado, I'll just uh, begin with a quick introduction about myself. Uh, so I've been I'm a product manager at Lambda Test. I'm a product enthusiast, and I've been uh, leading uh, the mobile app testing product uh, here at Lambda Test for the past one and a half years now. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited to talk about mobile app testing. And in terms of how we're going to go forward with uh, today's session is we're just going to talk about mobile apps for a few minutes. Uh, what are the different kinds of apps? How do we proceed with testing on those apps? And post that, we're going to move on the uh, devices aspect 
there are emulators, simulators, real devices through which you test. What is the difference between them? And we're going to spend a good chunk of time on manual testing. We're going to do a live demo and see how various uh, features can be used on Lambda test to uh, complete a mobile uh, app testing on uh, through manual. And post that, we're going to move on to the advanced part of testing, which is the automation. And again, we're going to do multiple demos there as well. We're going to see uh, different features, whether you want to test on emulators, whether you want to test on real devices at Lambda test, uh, or it, it's, it's a feature such as using geolocation. We're going to go through a demo of each one of those. And last 20 to 25 minutes, we're going to reserve for Q&A. All right, so let's get started. So about mobile apps, uh, now, you must have all heard that there are these three kind of major apps uh, that are already available, native apps, web apps, hybrid apps, but what is the difference between them? So native apps are specifically developed uh, for a particular mobile operating system, such as it could be iOS or Android, uh, whereas web apps are essentially uh, websites and they're optimized for mobile. They are used uh, via a browser inside the mobile, such as Chrome or Safari. On the other hand, hybrid apps combines the element of both native as well as web applications, and it's really easy to use. The benefit of hybrid app comes in the development part of it, uh, that it can be just built once and it can run on multiple platforms, uh, which can lead to a lower cost and even a shorter development time. Whereas uh, native apps, on the other hand, they require specific development effort. You need to have a separate app developed for iOS, a separate app for Android, uh, which leads to a higher cost and Again, a longer development time. Whereas web apps do not require any installation, they can work across platforms, all they need is a browser to run on. Uh, and they're essentially, uh, comparatively, they lead to a lower development cost. Uh, in terms of hardware features, native apps uh, are the highest in terms of the uses that they can do. They can fully leverage uh, all the device features, including camera, accessibility, compass, anything that the device supports, the hardware features, the native apps can actually leverage those. On the other hand, web apps have the most limited access to the device's native features. Since they're running on a browser, uh, they can use all the browser features, but not the device features. Hybrid apps, on the other hand, uh, are wrapped in native containers. So they have access to uh, most of the device features, but again, not all of them. On the other hand, performance, native apps are, are typically the best performers because they're being developed specifically for those operating systems. Web apps are reliant on a browser to run, uh, but as compared to native apps, they are a bit inferior. On the other hand, hybrid apps are still better than web apps, but performance may not be as good as native apps. Uh, one of the most common hybrid apps that I think most of us would be using in our day-to-day -day lives is Instagram. It's a hybrid application. All right, uh, just talking about more on the hybrid uh, hardware features, which uh, native apps have access to, but hybrid apps cannot, or even web apps do not have access to, are uh, specific features such as camera, microphone, geolocation. Uh, and then there are offline capabilities. Let's say there is no network, then your web apps cannot run because they're running on a browser. But if you're offline, there are still many features that can run on a native app then push notification is something that can only be sent through a native app or a hybrid app. They cannot be used directly on web apps. Uh, and again, performance is something we've already talked about. All right, uh, moving ahead to the next part, which is uh, we've all heard about simulators, emulators, and real device, but what is the difference between them and how they can actually be used and which ones are actually practical to be used during mobile app testing? So simulators just simulate the behavior of a system. They're not uh, actually replicating its hardware at all. Uh, on the other hand, emulators do include the hardware and firmware part of it, but they're again, not the actual hardware or the actual real device on which your software will run on. Uh, in terms of speed, the simulators are much more faster. They're easier to install. They'll be quicker to use as well, uh, but emulators will be comparatively slower since they contain the hardware aspect of it, but they'll be more accurate because at the end, your end users are using a real device. And physical devices uh, are costly and time consuming uh, than simulators and emulators uh, as, com as compared to simulators and emulators. However, in terms of accuracy, uh, since real device is something that your end users are going to use your mobile application on, uh, they are the most accurate and uh, they 
give you uh, how your software will actually run in a real world scenario. Whereas emulators provide a close approximation, but simulators are comparatively much less accurate. And uh, simulators largely currently are only supported on iOS devices, whereas emulators are supported on Android devices. And actual physical device, you can definitely get uh, for all types of OS that you're trying to test on. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to move on uh, directly to the demo. And before we just uh, do the demo for manual testing, I want to talk about uh, app testing and how different applications are distributed. Now, any developer who is uh, writing an application or creating an application, mobile application, there are multiple ways to distribute and send uh, the application uh, to the team. And uh, this can be both uh, for starting a QA part or even distributing it at the end to your end users. Uh, share. Generally, the part of QA is taken care of by sharing a build, uh, a build or APK file or an IPA file directly uh, with the QA team, and they can use that to run on emulators, simulators, or maybe even install on their physical devices. Uh, and uh, that is one of the most common ways that I have seen uh, currently. But there are multiple other ways which can help you automate your process, uh, or which can actually have your versioning. Since sharing builds, there's a problem with keeping all the versions together. So App Center is one of those ways where you can upload your builds and they can be shared with your QA team and they can have a reference for all versions. Similarly, Test Flight is another example which is specifically used only for iOS uh, uh, apps. On the other hand, Play Store and App Store are distribution platforms through which uh, you can share with your end users as well. And of course, if it's a production application, it can be tested directly as well. So for this session, we have also uh, provided a couple of sample applications through which we're going to go through. Uh, and uh, you will get the entire set of uh, the PPT at the end of the slides as well. Uh, and you can just download them, this Android sample and iOS sample app right from here. So without further ado, uh, let's dive into a Lambda test uh, a real device manual demo. And we're going to cover a few aspects such as network logs, device logs, IP geolocation, GPS geolocation, and idle timeout. And let's see how these can be leveraged uh, to ensure you're able to test your applications. All right. Uh, so here I am uh, on, on applife.lambdatest.com uh, under real devices section. And we're going to go ahead with a uh, web app testing first. And post that, we're going to move on to a native app testing. So uh, this is the web URL that I'm going to use, datadigital.com. This is just a sample example I'm using. And we're going to do this on an Android device. As you can see, I have a bunch of real devices to choose from. In reality, if you have to do it on a physical real device, it's, it's extremely costly. You cannot uh, purchase all these devices and all these versions. And at the end, uh, if you're trying to test multiple different applications, your end users might be based on the demographic, they might be using different devices. So let's just move ahead and choose Galaxy S22 uh, on a Google Chrome browser uh, and start our manual test. So what happens in the background is that uh, from our data centers where we have uh, real devices placed, we allocate one of the devices and we just start the session in real time for the users. And as you can see, the Tata Digital app that we uh, added is available right here for us for testing. Now I can scroll through it. I can search for any specific item that I want. Let's say I want to type in grocery and I can test my workflows. Now, of course, manual testing is more of an exploratory testing and there are much ad hoc items that you can add to ensure you're able to test your applications. But you, as you can see, you can use it as a real device and uh, in real time. Now, what items that actually help you we have provided are the are meant available in the toolbar. Uh, and the first one is actually just ability to see which device you're actually on, what is the resolution, aspect ratio, and the screen size. Along with that, you can also choose to switch if in the middle of the session you just think that I've already tested on S22, I want to try out, let's say, S21, you can go ahead and switch it and uh, try it out as well. Uh, and let's say you are going through your workflow and there is a bug that you have found out. It's a probable bug. The first thing that you will want to do is maybe take a screenshot or have a video recording and save it. 
so both those items are available right here and in fact uh, the ability to take a screenshot and mark as bug directly uh, there are multiple integrations available for it so i have my screenshot i can make edits let's say this is one of the items uh, i'm just going to change the color this is one of the items in which i found that there's an issue i'll just highlight it i can save it uh, so that it's referenced for later i can download it if i want or i can click on marcus bug and uh, I have integrated my Jira directly uh, here. So what I can do is I can directly choose a project where I want to raise a Jira uh, and let's say I want to assign it to myself and I can choose the components through which it is. It is a bug. Add a quick summary. What is happening? Uh, and again, uh, there would be multiple items that are there available for your uh, reference which you can add work description and from here directly i can even choose to send it on slack or maybe directly create an issue now this will create an issue from lambda test adding that screenshot directly in jira as well and i believe one of the fields was missed due to which we got that error that account owner field was a mandatory field which i had missed let me just go back and check it quickly I'm just going to type in the details again. It's a high urgency issue. And let's see if there is an account on a field. I don't see an account on a field. Probably this is a setting this in my Jira itself. Uh, so for now, let me just choose a different project uh, or test and go ahead and create okay so as we can see that the bug has been marked successfully and we can go back to Ajira and move forward from there as well and it can be reported and assigned directly to uh, the relevant developer which makes it really easy to just test your workflows. Along with that, there is also an option to record a video. There would be a lot of workflows which are a little time taking. Let's say you have to make multiple clicks in order to reproduce that. This is a very common scenario, uh, specifically in exploratory testing, because you want to go through your entire flow and after a specific case only, does the bug actually reproduce? So I can compare all of this. And let's say once I go here, there are some issues that I'm finding. I'll, I have just recorded the video. I can stop this recording. And then I have this recording saved in my gallery right here. And this can be leveraged later on. I have my screenshot. I have my video. And these can be leveraged later on as well and downloaded directly from here and shared with the relevant team members to understand the workflow. Apart from that, there is something very interesting called the DevTools. And now these are specifically created for Chrome and Safari browsers. In case of Android, it's the Chrome browser. And in case of Safari, it's, uh, uh, in case of iOS, it's a Safari browser, my bad. And let's say I just go ahead and I'm able to see all the network calls that are being made. Uh, specifically, if I see any API that is failing, I can also refer to that directly and uh, inform my relevant team member that I see that this data API is not giving me a 200 response. There might be some issue with this API and then proceed with there as well. This comes really handy uh, when you're even wanting to maybe fetch some specific elements within the app, trying to see what is happening and proceed uh, with your testing. All right, so apart from that, we also talked about uh, geolocation. Uh, now, there are two types of geolocation. One, we have IP geolocation through which we're actually routing our network traffic uh, through a specific region. And here we have a list of countries and regions uh, that we can choose. Let's say I choose United States for now. So uh, what will happen is that uh, our IP geolocation for this session will be updated and we'll be able to navigate uh, through a specific test case uh, and if I see uh, what is my IPG location, 
let's just quickly check my current IP geolocation. And then you'll see that it is actually routed through the United States. Similarly, there are options to choose from. Okay, it is not, it is asking me to enter. Let's choose a better, let's choose a better site. What is my geolocation? Yes, so as you can see, my IP location has been pointed to Atlanta, Georgia, and the US. Uh, and accordingly, I can choose from a various and plethora of uh, countries and even US states if there are specific test cases that I want to test out. Apart from that, we also have uh, ability to set GPS geolocation. Now, GPS geolocation is uh, very useful in use cases for applications that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. Let's say I want, I, I'm testing a Swiggy application and I want to check out my workflow through which users can actually uh, mark their del delivery, mark their location, and then we can track the driver delivering my uh, food order. So for that, this is extremely helpful. I can search for a particular location. Let's say and this is the location that I want to choose. It has pointed me to the right location and I can just go ahead and confirm it that this is my location that I want to choose. Now it will update my GPS geolocation and once that is updated, I can go ahead and actually just verify that as well. Let me just go to maps. And as you can see, it is actually pointing me to the location in New Delhi that I just chose. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this again comes really handy. And since you have an option to choose search via Google, as well as add specific latitudes and longitudes, um, you can actually pinpoint your specific locations as well in case you're not even able to find it on Google search. So it comes really handy. Uh, next, we have an option to go back to the home page. This is again a quick, uh, easy, easy option to just navigate back to the home page in case you want to test anything else on the device. And apart from that, we also have device controls, including changing the language of the device. Uh, now, in a lot of applications or a lot of use cases, when you're trying to uh, test regional applications, or even if not regional, they are specific to a country, uh, this language option becomes really handy. And the, it also is helpful to test whether your application is supporting multiple languages. A lot of applications support only a singular language, but a lot have option to choose multiple languages. Then we have an option to choose a volume up, volume down, uh, just to check whether what is happening on the device and accordingly the device's volume will toggle. And we have an option to fetch clipboard as well. Not only can you copy paste from, uh, let's say, I want to just paste this, datadigital.com from your uh, uh, computer to the device. But you can also, in fact, let's say if I choose a data digital homepage, I want to copy this data digital homepage and I want to fetch this outside. So I can just go ahead and click on uh, fetch clipboard. So what it will do, it will allow me to copy whatever I have copied from the device to my local system or laptop as well. So as you can see, we've been able to copy from the device. Uh, now, this comes handy when you're actually testing a specific unique URL and you want to uh, fetch it outside and give it to uh, specific users or developers, then it can be used. Now, there is also an option to, of course, uh, rotate your device. And let's see, this particular app is not supported on a landscape mode. So we can test those workflows as well right here, which comes really handy. And finally, we have the option to actually set your idle timer. Uh, this is useful for uh, a lot of applications such as HDFC Bank. Banking applications generally have an idle timeout. If you're not using your application for let's say one minute or two minutes, they generally log you out and they ask you to uh, log back in again. Uh, and uh, you can just test those workflows by setting an idle timeout of let's say five minutes. Or if it's a larger timeline that you want to check, you have an option to uh, add up to 45 minutes idle timeout. There's also option to set the time zone on the device if you're uh, checking for a specific time zone. 
uh, currently all our devices are set on GMT time zone. Uh, and you can just choose to add any specific time zone and proceed with that. One of the most important features that I have noticed comes the network throttling aspect. A lot of applications, let's say Uber, you're trying to use, you're going to test your Uber application. Uh, what becomes really important are the different network uh, conditions through which you're testing your application. And in order to do that, you have to ensure that you're able to uh, navigate through your application in a slow 3G or maybe in a 5G or even a custom mode where you're getting a 2G speed. Uh, since there are different uh, regions, specifically in India as well, that uh, you have to ensure that you're covering your all your bases and you're able to toggle your network and then test your speed in specific uh networks as well and again if you just let's say trying to test what is happening and what is the speed so we have currently chosen a slow 3g which is giving us a fast speed comparatively so let's just go ahead and in fact choose something else right now. And go ahead with Tata Digital, move back to fast.com. Okay, so these are the speeds through which you can test. Along with that, there is also an option to just go ahead and choose your specific projects. Uh, now, a lot of test cases, you're trying to test a specific workflow and you want to ensure that uh, you are grouping your test cases together. In order to do that, there's an option to choose project. And these projects can be leveraged at a later point of time to ensure that your uh, uh, testing specific uh, test cases and grouping them together and then you're able to filter them out quickly as well. There must be recordings and videos that you have sa saved and they can be leveraged easily at a later point of time. All right, so these are all the features through which you can test your web applications. Uh, and I'm going to quickly end the session and I'm going to proceed with app testing, uh, which is a native app. All right, since we went ahead with the Android device in the previous session, uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead with an iOS in this case. And as you can see, again, for iOS devices as well, there is a plethora of devices such as iPhone, iPads, uh, through which you can choose from, and they're available with different OS versions. Uh, now, in order to test your native apps, as we discussed earlier, there are multiple distribution platforms. And native applications can be distributed via Play Store, App Store, uh, or even Test Flight and App Center. And you can choose to configure all of these and integrate them directly on Lambda Test. And, uh, test your specific applications. There's also an option to upload uh, your applications either from a file or from a URL. And right now we're just going to see, let's say if I want to upload any particular sample app, I can go ahead, choose the application and uh, click on open. And it will upload the application for me and post that I can quickly start my testing. So I'm just going to choose an application that I've already uploaded. I'm going to choose, let's say an iPhone 12 Pro device, and I'm going to start the session for native app testing. So again, uh, in the background, we're just having a device allocated to you. And since this is an app testing, what we're going to do is we're also going to install the application and launch the application so that the testing can actually be started a little quicker. So this is our sample proverbial app that we're going to use throughout uh, this demo. And uh, as you can see, I have multiple options here. I can uh, get a toast here, change the color of the text, change the text itself, or get a quick notification from the application, go ahead and s see what is the geolocation that I'm currently getting. Uh, and let's say I just want to navigate back and I have an option to go to the browser and search in on anything on Google as well. Uh, in terms of the features, again, now native app and browser testing, since at the end we're trying to test mobile applications, it's going to be uh, pretty same. You're going to get an option to additional options to actually install multiple applications, which is native apps. Kill your applications or uninstall your application. 
Now, in a lot of test cases, let's say uh, you're just trying to test an application which has just been released by a developer. In earlier stages, generally, your application could be crashing in a lot of devices, and uh, that could lead to frustration. So in order to ending the session and then coming back again, there's an easy option to just kill your app and then restart it, or even uninstall within the same session itself. And you can install new or multiple applications as well by directly uploading here, and then proceed with testing on multiple application use cases as well. Again, there's an option to switch and see the device uh, details. Uh, along with the specific minor version as well. This is iPhone 14.8. Uh, in iOS specifically, there are a lot of cases that I've seen where the applications are not working properly on a specific minor versions. So it, it becomes a little important to test those aspects as well. And we have an option to mark as bug, record a video, gallery, as we've seen previously. Uh, and there are something additional that we get in case of native application, which is the logs. Now, we get the device logs, which is what exactly is happening through the entire device. Along with that, there is also an option to go directly to your particular app's log. So you can choose your app logs and you will see only your relevant app logs. And there's an option to filter your log levels as well. Now, again, this uh, becomes a little relevant for uh, particular users when they're trying to uh, test their applications and they just want to see what are the errors that your application is giving. So you can just filter them out quickly. And in case your application gets crashed, you get the crash logs as well readily available here. Apart from that, you also get an option to go through uh, the network logs. Whatever network calls your application is making, you can see them here itself. And again, you can raise out to your uh, developers in case you see any non-200 statuses, which becomes easier for them to debug as well. They also get to know where your application is failing. Suppose that, uh, let's say, there is another option uh, that we can use, which is called the UI inspector. Uh, and let me just go back to the native part of the application. Now the UI inspector actually gives you the list of elements and this becomes handy when you're trying to automate your processes. Uh, now, since manual testing is focused on exploratory part and when you have your specific explorations done, you want to automate your processes, so the UI inspector actually helps you navigate and provide you parameters and attributes that you can use as your locator strategies in your automation script. Now here I can see that for this particular element, there is a type attribute and a name attribute or a label attribute, which I can use uh, directly in my automation script. I can also use an accessibility ID through which it can be used. Now I can see my entire tree uh, of elements and it becomes really easier for me directly clicking on them and seeing how I can uh, automate this process. Now, of course, we have the option to choose IP geolocation and GPS geolocation as well, and go back to home page. And the remaining features are exactly as we saw uh, in uh, browser testing as well. But there's an additional feature here as well that you are allowed to go to your app spe settings specifically so what will happen in the background is the application that you've installed will navigate to the settings of that application. And so that you, if you want to change any specific uh, parameters, such as you have given them access to location, you've given access to notifications, you want to switch them off uh, and you want to test how it's working, you can quickly do that. It won't allow any not notification going further. You can check your city if that is allowed. And then you can just go back to your homepage, uh, open your application and Proceed with testing. All right. Uh, so I believe this covers uh, almost all the aspects of uh, native application that can be tested. There are also a couple of pointers that I would like to add, which is that uh, there is an option to test uh, your native image injection capabilities as well. All you need to do is enable your image injection feature. Uh, in the app, and you'll be able to test your image injection workflows as well, where you need to capture an image. All right, I think uh, we have a poll coming up. In the meantime, Shantanu, I think we can take a few of the questions as well. Definitely, we can do that. So, 
people you will be seeing a poll on your screen please feel free to add in your answers over there in the meantime one of the most uh, asked questions so far has been uh, what exactly like lambda test is it a test authoring tool or a test execution tool so this is something i wanted to highlight again um, lambda test does not help you in authoring your tests we do not have record and replay features we do not have any test authoring features as of now what we do is we help you execute the tests that you already have either if you want to run manually or through automated means we help you execute your tests at a section at a very huge list of real devices emulators and simulators browsers browser environments operating systems so we have a very huge infrastructure that will enable you to run your tests at scale in parallel across multiple devices multiple environments so we integrate with all the uh, most important test authoring tools open source test authoring tools including apm selenium uh, xui test espresso uh, and we also integrate with a few of the low code no code test authoring tools like selenium id tricentis tosca and all of this that will enable you to run your test executions right uh one of the another questions that was related to uh, let me just pick that up can we test gaming apps on lambda tests on different devices there is okay uh, you can test it but uh, because there would be a very long network element involved in it so the fps that you would be getting won't be uh, let's say very conducive to testing mobile games but if you want to check performance scores if you want to check the basic functionalities yes you can do that there is another question related to uh, the geolocation so yes uh, lambda test will enable you to check uh, geolocation testings but there is no native support right now for sim cards so what that means is that uh, if you change the geolocation it won't go on a roaming or something because that features are not there but the application that you are testing it will pick up gps and ip location as us and based on that you can perform your testing right? uh, another question shantanu i think you would be able to help out if i need to test scanning of a barcode can it be done yes uh, and that is the part that i just mentioned at the end that can be done via image injection feature you can upload your barcode uh and your application will directly fetch that out as well and there was also another question related to uh, finger i think biometric features so what kind of features are available with us related to biometrics correct so biometric authentication uh, is currently in uh, in private beta it is uh, still being developed and released but what it will include essentially is uh, face id and uh, touch id as well if your application supports face id or touch id those biometric authentication can be either passed or failed according to uh, whatever your use case is got it how does it work for apps related to streaming services what are the challenges for testing application especially during the live streaming correct so uh, i i think it again relates back to what mudit just mentioned uh, live streaming can be tested there is a high internet speed as well but uh since the device is being streamed on your device there could be a, a minor lag in fps but i think live streaming can definitely be tested we can open uh, let's say a youtube channel through that we can test out what is the video streaming and proceed from that as well and apart from that i think i also uh, read one of the questions if tv apps can be tested as well uh so uh, yes tv applications can be tested through automation uh, however not through manual Uh, there is uh, availability of Roku TV, Fire TV, and Apple TV already on Lambda Test platform, and you can automate your processes and run your app automation on those devices. There is another question related to Drive Engine for products like Drive Engine, which capture a lot of in-outs from sensors such as gyro, location, motion, etc. Does Lambda Test work with this platform? uh correct so some of these aspects becomes a little hard uh, to navigate through for example most location sensing i think we've already discussed but gyro and motion uh, becomes a little difficult since the device is right there there isn't 
much uh, open source uh, APM capabilities available to test motion sensing, but there are a lot of uh, ways you can automate this process. For example, setting locations, multiple locations using latitude and longitudes uh, and uh, giving the location changes in specific time intervals to actually mock your motion services. So there are ways uh, to ensure you're able to test such uh, a scenario but the use of gyro specifically is not currently uh, possible so to highlight again like the, the devices that we provide real devices they are on a data center connected via network provided and we provide you virtual access to these devices so as these are let's say data center built cloud devices uh, having a gyro based or having a motion based uh, kind of features in it is a little bit difficult to provide but as Shantanu also mentioned, there are ways that you can uh, mock those features, specifically the location features, movement features, specifically in uh, automation testing. So that will help you out. I think uh, there is, uh, okay, and there's another question related to the credentials like developer account or Apple ID credentials. So if you are testing on real devices on uh, even in emulator simulators, iOS or Android, right now we only provide you a complete uh, pristine clean new device. So whenever you log in, you would have to add in these credentials from your end specifically for any testing. And uh, but be rest assured once that testing gets done, that device is completely wiped clean. So your credentials would be wiped clean as well. But uh, it's important that you have these credentials from your own end, either through your clients or through your own account to test everything across there. Correct. Uh, so I see one more question related to Tosca. Uh, so Tosca Commander uh, can be integrated to use Lambda test real devices. And uh, there is an option to actually have Tosca scan uh, in mobile as well. Uh, so even that can be used uh, to ensure you're able to get a real device popped up on uh, Tosca Commander and navigate uh, through that from Lambda test directly. Okay, there's another question related to UI inspector not available for a web applications. No, for web applications as well, UI inspector is there. So in the left hand side, when you log in, uh, when you launch a device, there is a toolbar in the left hand side there you will find in this uh, in there a dev tool option so clicking on it will open up the ui inspector using which you can debug your applications correct applications. absolutely so there's an option chrome dev tools and safari web inspector are available through which you can just choose your elements and uh, proceed with your testing and in fact just to add to that there is also an option uh, to have your web views uh, uh, inspected as well. So native apps could have multiple uh, contexts, right? A native app context or a web view context. Even those contexts can be inspected through UI Inspector uh, by just turning it on on your application. In addition, we have both real devices and emulators and simulators. I see there are two or three questions around this. So yes, we have both emulators and real devices. Also, if you need to test your applications that are behind VPN, are privately hosted or are uh, hosted in a let's say locally hosted you can test them as well and using the feature lambda tunnel and uh, you will be able to test your vpn based applications using that feature all right uh well it should be proceed to the next aspect of it or should we yes, take a few i think uh, we have few questions that are related to automation side so we will take that afterwards correct all right uh so let's just proceed with the, the app automation uh part of the session and we're just going to deep dive into multiple scenarios here multiple cases and we're going to go through a, a few scripts as well so that it becomes really easy to understand all the aspects of app automation as well but before we start uh just mentioning uh, what are the commonly used authoring frameworks for app automation it's, it's the most common is apm 
uh, which I think almost everybody is using. But apart from that, there is also Espresso from Google, which is only for Android devices, XUIT from Apple, which is only specific for iOS devices. And then we also have Detox. Uh, for this particular session, we're only going to focus on APM and uh, testing our automation through APM itself. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to run a quick demo on a local emulator and see how app automation uh, can be run on an emulator. Now, there are some few setups involved, just installing Android Studio so you can set up your emulator, installing Node.js. Since APM uh, server is required to be hosted on your machine if you're trying to run your automation locally. And uh, then, of course, installing APM and making sure that you have your Java client library. Since I'm going to be using a Java client for APM here for this entire session, uh, it's going to be specifically in Java TestNG framework. And apart from that, what you just need to know in order to run your Apple app automation is having a sample application to test or your application under test, then desired capabilities and your test script. So let me just uh, go back to an emulator here. Now, this is uh, my Android Studio, and I've already spent up uh, an emulator on Pixel 5 on Android 11 here. And I've also installed the Proverbial app uh, inside this device. As you can see, we have the Proverbial app that we were talking about earlier. So let me just close this application and put it here. On the other hand, on the right hand side, as you can see, I have my APM server running. So for ease, let me just spin up the APM server once again. Uh, All right, so here I have my APM server. I have added a uh, specific environment variables uh, for it to ensure that my Android home and Java home are uh, pointing to the right location where my uh, where my folders are installed. And I'm just going to start uh, the server. So my APM server has started. Uh, I have my emulator up and running. Now all I need is a script to ensure I'm able to run my app automation test. So let's actually navigate to the script as well. So here I have a Java test ng uh, script uh, uh, where I'm just providing the grid URL, uh, which is my local host URL for APM server, which is running on 4723 port. Uh, apart from that, I'm providing the basic set of capabilities, which is uh, the device name, my platform name, uh, what is the app that I'm trying to uh, install and spin up, and what is the activity. Now, the app package and app activity is specifically used for emulators, whereas bundle Bundle ID is something that would be used for uh, simulators, which is for iOS. Post that, I'm just creating a driver, uh, providing the UR, grid URL, which is my local host URL, and the capabilities, which I've defined here, uh, into the driver. And through this driver, I'm going to find specific elements and run automation. Now, uh, just to go through it, I'm just going to open the application and click on different buttons. And let's just see how that works. I'm going to run this script now so this is the command to run the script let me just fire it up okay running test suit so let me navigate back to the device and see what happens so as you can see the app has popped up it is clicking on different buttons here toast is visible notification it's navigated to geolocation, clicking on home page again, doing a quick speed test, going to browser, searching for Lambda test, and that's it. And we're going to end the session now. So uh, my entire aspect, uh, which I, I'm just trying to do, let's say I have a complete workflow, I'm trying to do it manually. I have just automated that entire aspect and I'm able to run it on an emulator. And uh, uh, in the script as well, you'll be able to see, uh, you just need to add specific elements where you want to click and UI inspector will help you create the script as well. And you can just uh, ensure you're able to run an automation. Uh, now, apart from that, let me just uh, proceed on how you can uh, do this entire activity on a Lambda test field device cloud, because at the end, this is still an emulator, right? 
you're not uh, testing your application uh, directly on a real physical device uh, through which you will get to know how your software works, but it is an emulator. And in order to test your applications on Lambda Test Real Device Cloud, that is completely possible. However, in order to do that, uh, one important aspect would be uploading your application on the Lambda Test Cloud. Uh, now, in order to do that, there are multiple ways uh, you can do that. You can either upload your application through the dashboard. And uh, let me just quickly show you the app automation dashboard as well. Correct. So here there's an option. I'm, I'm going to explain all of these aspects a little later of what we see here. But for now, uh, let's just go ahead and see how we can upload an application. I can browse a file. Um, let's say I want to upload this application here. It will upload for me. And on the other hand, what it will return is an app URL. Now this app URL is something which is a unique identifier for this particular application, which Lambda test needs to run that application on a real device cloud in automation. I can just copy this application and use it in my script. Or uh, there is another way through which I can do it, which is using a curl command. I'm sorry, using a curl command. Uh, now I'm quickly going to open Postman uh, where I have my APIs listed down. Uh, so this is my curl command, uh, as you can see, in order to upload my application. Now, what I'm doing here is this is an API I'm calling. I'm providing it uh, my authentication, username, access key from Lambda test. And I've defined the name of the application, uh, which is proverbial demo app. I have provided the app file. So I can again go ahead and select and choose which particular uh, file I want. Let's say I want a uh, sample image injection APK. So I can open it, I can rename it image injection and I can click on send and it will upload the application for me and in return it will point me to the app URL which can be used in my automation script uh, for lambda test to understand which application is under test. All right uh, so let's just navigate back uh, and see there are some additional parameters which is custom ID, visibility, storage that can be used in order to upload my application. And I can see them right here. There is storage, there is uh, visibility, there is custom ID. What do they mean, uh, basically? So these are enhancements or shortcuts which help you uh, test items faster. If there are multiple builds for the same application that you're getting and you've already written your automation script, then custom ID becomes really helpful. Uh, so I define a custom ID, I name it proverbial. So under app automation, I can directly use this uh, proverbial name instead of this complicated app URL. And every time I upload a new application, this will be overwritten and I don't have to make any changes to my script if I want to test a new build that my developer has provided. Similarly, visibility is something that can be used by default, your application is only visible to you. But if you want uh, to ensure that your application becomes visible to everyone in your team, you can just ensure that visibility is set as team and now this application will be available to everybody in your team. Apart from that, there are specific URLs that are used to upload your application. Uh, and in order to do that, you can choose to store either the URL uh, or the file directly. Now, the reason this becomes helpful is that sometimes the URL that you're provided for applications, they have an expiry timeline. And then if you're trying to upload the application or run the application through URL at a later point of time, uh, you're not able to access uh, that particular application. So you can just choose storage as file and we'll save that file directly instead of the URL if required. Of course, all of these are optional and they can you can choose to use them as per your benefit. Uh, there are some documentations available for whatever I have just discussed. Your uh, how you can upload your applications, how you can fetch your applications. Uh, and let me just show you that as well. So this is the list of applications that I've uploaded and I can just see all those applications uh, through this particular API and even see the metadata for that application. What is the version, versioning name, uh, what is the minimum supported, if I added any custom ID, whether it's shared or not. All of those details I can see right here for all the applications that I've uploaded. 
Now this API would be available in this top document, fetching your applications, and you can navigate through it and see all the details. Uh, now let me just proceed uh, with how you can test on a Lambda test device uh, as well. And uh, in order to do that, I'm going to navigate back to the script. Uh, and let's say, let's go ahead with parallel Android Java. So this is an Android application. First, we're just going to run a simple uh, test, the same test that we just ran on an emulator on a Lambda test real device on an Android device. So the difference that you see here is uh, between an emulator or a local testing and Lambda test testing is the username and access key that I have added here. Uh, second is the grid URL. Instead of pointing to a local host a APM server that I spinned up, I am pointing to mobilehub.lambdatest.com, uh, which is uh, pointing to the real device cloud of Lambda test. Apart from that, I'm adding capabilities just as I would. Of course, there would be some additional capabilities which we will just discuss about. Uh, and I'm defining the driver using the URL which we have created above and the capabilities we have created here. So post that, I'm just using exactly the same script uh, which we used in emulators and uh, moving ahead. I am just going to add a quick change in the script as well and add a sleep so you can see some of the items. So uh, without further ado, let me just run this test and uh, post that we'll discuss more on the capabilities as well as how you can uh, see and debug your automation tests as well. So let me just use ambient clean install to ensure my dependencies from Maven libraries are installed. Uh, within the directory once i am aware of that i'm just going to run the command to run the single test okay so i can see that it's running uh, the test suit here and i'm going to navigate okay i'm already here so a new build is available And I can see that there is this device, Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G, which I have chosen. And the test is started running. It was in queue for a few seconds there, but now I can see that there is a live session ongoing and my uh, scripts are getting executed. Now, this is again exactly similar to what we did on emulators, uh, on a local emulator. Now we're going to go to browser, type in lambdatest.com and just find it and end the session. All right, uh, so I just want to now take some time to uh, define what is actually happening in this entire page. So every time we run a new test, there is a build created. There is a build associated with it and that build could contain multiple tests under it. Uh, as you can see that this is the name of the build that I have chosen. Uh, now this build name I have actually defined in my script as well using capabilities. So this capability build Java test ng Android parallel is something which is visible right here on this page as part of the build name. On the other hand, uh, if you see uh, the name of the capability that I've said, I've set it as platform plus device plus version. And this platform device version I'm defining in my Android single uh, library where I have defined it as platform Android device Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G and version 11. So this is the device I wanted my test to run on and that is the name of the test as well that I have kept. So as you can see platform Android Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G 11 this is the name of my test. Now of course I can choose whatever name I want depending on my uh, usage. Post that I'm defining the device uh, name, platform version, platform name. Again, these are defining which device you want to run, run on specific platform versions, OS versions. And I have also chosen is real mobile true. Since Lambda test supports both emulators and simulators as well as real devices, is real mobile true ensures that you're only getting real devices. Now here I'm defining the app, which is the app URL, which we saw earlier and what was happening with that, how we need to upload the app. I could have also chosen to use a custom ID here uh, which I defined earlier, I had chosen Provobial as the custom ID. So I could have used Provobial as well here and went ahead with my test. Device orientation, I want portrait. Then I have 
console logs, getting console output, network logs. We saw in manual testing as well, how network logs can be leveraged. A visual uh, true gives you all the screenshots and device logs uh, gives you all the device logs. Again, device logs is something we saw in manual testing as well. Now, all of this we have defined. Going back to uh, the app automation dashboard, uh, now you can see that there is a build. We have all the tests available here, uh, and there are multiple categories of tests as well. This one is passed. I can search my tests if there are multiple using test name or test ID. I can filter them on the basis of duration or status. Sorry, sort them on the basis of duration or status. I can even share my entire build with somebody else from the team. I can quickly get a shareable link, uh, generate it by clicking get shareable link, copy it, and then let's say I want to use it and share it with somebody else who does not even have access to Lambda test, even they will be able to get this public link and see what actually happened uh, inside the test and the build. Now let's go inside the test and see what exactly are we getting in terms of the details here. On the left hand side, you can see that we have the video of the test. Uh, you can see exactly what happened on this real device. Uh, the app launched uh, and then we clicked on different buttons and then we proceeded. Corresponding to each one of these, we can see that there is a command as well, along with a screenshot. So I'm clicking on this element. I can see what are the commands that were sent. I can see a screenshot. Again, and again, I can mark as bug directly from here as well. And this is again the same Jira integration that we saw for manual as well. If I see that any one of them are giving me uh, an error, there is a response. Those will be highlighted as red instead of green. And I can proceed and mark as bug if required. The ones which have a visual image means that they have a screenshot attached to it as well. And I can just navigate through all the elements as I want. And if there are multiple uh, commands, there's a quick way to just uh, go to the bottom of the command and see what happened at the end of the session. You can see your basic information, session ID, automation name, duration of the test. Uh, what is the application information? This is the app that we used, Proverbial. This was the app URL that I used. If I want to use it again, use it again I can quickly copy. What are the capabilities that I used inside the test? Uh, these are all the desired capabilities that I've passed. I can see all of them right here. Some of them I did not pass, but those are the ones that by default Lambda test keeps. And hence we are showing uh, directly available here as well in case there are any doubts on that. And you can see all the screenshots and download them together as well if required, or even navigate through each of the screenshots uh, as you might like. Apart from that, we have all the test or command logs, which we've just seen, or you can search for specific command logs. You can ensure that you're able to see only the ones which have a, a screenshot or only the ones which gave you an exception or non uh, 200 status, but currently we did not get any exception uh, and proceed through that. Then we have the device logs. Now device logs actually uh, gives you what happens in throughout the device and you can easily go and view all the raw logs as well. Since this is a long test of logs, this is a truncated view. However, you can just click and go and navigate through all the logs that you got get and even search for it and navigate through them uh, quite easily. Uh, there is also an option to fetch this log so via an API. You can use this API, copy it, and maybe integrate it with your CI CD pipeline if you want to have device logs saved in specific file for every test that can be done as well. Similarly, for network logs, you get all the network calls that were made uh, throughout the test. Uh, whether any of them were non-200 statuses, you can go ahead and see them and you can download your network logs as well and easily understand if any particular API is failing. Then we also have the APM logs. Uh, now, these are the logs which APM is returning. So in case of emulators, uh, you might have noticed that there were a lot of logs that were coming up here. Uh, when we ran an APM test on emulators initially. Now, all of these logs are actually generated by APM. Now, since they were in local machine, they're available here. However, if you're running on Lambda test as well, you can see all those APM logs right here uh, itself. And there's an option to, again, see the entire logs or download them uh, as well quite quickly. If there were any crash logs, you will be able to see them here, but currently there aren't any crash logs. Now, there's also an option for app profiling on Lambda test. 
uh, we haven't used this in particular in this particular test but uh, let us add it in the next test that we're going to do forward for uh, maybe down the line because we have multiple scripts that we're going to run and then we're going to understand what exact, exactly our profiling does all right so let me just quickly now uh, run a test in parallel as well so this was a single test that we ran now uh, I have defined a separate XML to run parallel test. And as you can see, all I've done is defined a separate parameter using the same class name and defining a different device. I'm using two different devices now, and I want both these tests to run in parallel. Uh, and I'm just going to run the command for parallel as well, Android hyphen parallel. Now this is the name of the file, XML file for parallel that I'm writing. And I'm just going to run this command and actually now that we're running this command let me also add the capability for uh, app profiling so that we can see what exactly does it do I'm going to save it and i'm just going to run the test all right now it says running test suit let's navigate back to run the test and we can see that there are two tests that have come up both of them are in queue right now they're cute so during the queue time the app is getting the device is getting allocated uh, to the user and uh, the application is also getting installed on the device now as we can see both of them are now running i can go ahead and choose to see uh, any particular live uh, video or live command logs as well what is happening on the device so that i don't have to wait for the session to end and it becomes easier for me to navigate and maybe find out any issues that might be happening now again this is the same script that we were using earlier you can see that the test has ended both of the tests have ended now actually now let's actually go inside any of these tests and see what app profiling is uh, but before we proceed with app profiling, uh, so this is how you run a parallel test. You can have multiple devices to choose from uh, so that you're covering more number of devices and you're not wasting your time and you're running the same script uh, parallelly on multiple devices. So uh, within 30 seconds, I was able to execute on both these devices. <clears throat> now navigating to app profiling. Now app profiling is something uh, which Lambda test has started uh, this has been brought out quite recently and uh, this actually gives you your application details as to what is happening when your test is running whether your application performance is actually good or not and that includes providing you information about let's say the cold startup time what is the hot startup time now, the difference between a cold startup and hot startup is that uh, when you don't have your application open and you open it for the first time, that is a cold startup. However, when you have when you have your application in the background and you're just trying to open it again from recent apps, then that is a hot startup time. What is the max CPU utilization, memory usage, frame rate, network rates? All of those informations you can see uh, directly right here itself. And there is a graph for the entire session, uh, the 27 or 28 seconds that the test ran. You can see what was the cpu usage during any particular time uh, percentage what is my application particularly using not only the cpu and you can see that this particular time is when uh, it is pretty high so i can go ahead and see what happened at six seconds or during my test and maybe navigate and check whether my application is uh, responding a little slowly at any particular time point of time now this becomes really helpful when you have an application that needs to be tested on multiple devices because each device could give you a different perf uh, performance metric uh, for your application and since it's a hardware specific problem it becomes really handy to actually test out your uh, application usage the memory usage cpu usage because that all leads to the performance of the application what's the rendering rate fps during the session any network calls or upload or download that was done since there wasn't any upload or download specifically done during the session we see this is as blank uh, on the other hand what was the battery and temperature we see that there was a slight spike in the temperature as well during the session so this can be attributed to different reasons cpu being spiked and of course we can go back to our developer and really use this now, of course i can download my anr dumps as well now anrs are application not responding uh, a lot of times you might have seen 
uh, a wait or kill page option that comes up. So those are application not responding for Android devices or any app crashes that happened. All right, uh, now apart from that, let me just navigate back to our discussion. Uh, we have already gone through parallel testing. Now there are a lot of use cases through which you want to run uh, your local applications, which are not accessible outside. So for that, you can use uh, the tunnel. There is an application called Underpass, which Lambda Test has created. Uh, you can use that application. Uh, and let me just open it up here. And since our discussion for emulators and simulators is done, I'm just going to close them quickly, including the APM server. All right, so uh, Underpass is a tunnel application. It ensures that there is a tunnel created from your local machine to the Lambda test uh, device cloud uh, to ensure that uh, there isn't anything breaking and you're able to test your local applications as well. So let me just name this as testathon and launch this tunnel. Now I have started a tunnel there is another way that I can use this uh, tunnel apart from underpass application, which is, uh, let's say I go here, there is an option to configure tunnel. I can either use a command line to configure it or use the desktop app, which I just used and just initiate the tunnel. So let me go back to the home page. Okay, we're already at the app automation home page. And since we have launched a tunnel, we can see that one tunnel, Testathon, this is active now. Now, if I want to run my application using tunnel, uh, I will just uh, quickly demo how to do that using an iOS device. Uh, now, again, this is exactly the same. I have used the same capabilities and I've used an app URL for my IPA application, .ipa, provided my username access key, hub URL, and using a similar script that we used for Android as well. Just, you might just notice that the way the script is written is a little different for an iOS device. Uh, two additional things that I've added here is the tunnel and tunnel name. Now uh, I'm sending tunnel as true, which defines that I'm going to use a tunnel in this test. And the tunnel name that I want to specify is testathon. Uh, that is the name of the tunnel I have defined so that uh, my test gets routed through this. Uh, now I'm just going to quickly do a clean install, ensure my dependencies are installed. And now I'm going to run a test, I use hyphen single. Let me just open the folders as well to validate and verify. I use hyphen single is my XML file. And then I'm just going to run the test. You can see it's running the test suit. I have named the build as Java test ng iOS hyphen tunnel. So let's navigate. I can see that there's new builds available. Click to view. And I have Java test ng iOS tunnel available right here. I have the test in queue currently. And I can see that this tunnel icon is active. It shows that my tunnel is being used during this test session. Now again, in the background, what is happening is that the device is getting allocated to this user and uh, the application is getting installed. Now we can see that the test is running. So as you can see that there are some uh, non 200 statuses that we've got and they're highlighted in red, which means that it tried to find that particular element but was not able to at that particular point of time. And we have the session as completed. So these are highlighted in red since they were not executed. Then we see that there are some retries added and finally it is able to find that element. And we can see the video as well of the test, just as we were able to see on an Android device as well. Again, similarly, we have the device logs, you have network logs, APM logs, crash logs, all of those available right here itself in order to test our application. All right, now let me just put this aside. Okay, so now we've gone through our tunnel and parallel testing. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through some real world use cases. 
and since we're a little short of time i'm going to go through these a little quickly the first thing that we're going to do we're going to run an automation on a pre-installed application on the device let's say uh, i don't have an application that i want to install again i already have it on the device it's already in setup let's say it's a youtube app and i want to run an automation how we can do that see how we can use gps and ip geolocation uh, on a test then we're going to see how we can use image injection uh, during an automation and we're going also going to see an automation while installing multiple applications on the device and how they can be launched and tested uh, on the device so let's start with the first one uh, running automation on pre-installed applications such as youtube i'm going to navigate to uh, pre-installed apps here we have all right so just going to inform what different we're doing here in terms of capabilities so first is the application that we're using uh, as you can see that this instead of providing the app url we're using something called a stock now this tells you that to use a stock application again this is something which is specific to lambda test and this ensure that you're able to run your pre-installed applications test for android we have to pass app package and app activity along with stock apps to inform what application we're actually trying to launch and test on similarly for ios you could use a bundle bundle id to inform which application you're trying to test remaining of the test uh, is, is a little different here since we're just opening the application clicking on account youtube uh, clicking on account and then clicking on signing button and now now let's just see how this goes again just installing my dependencies quickly and running my test and just validating the name of the example file okay now we have it is running test suit we have a new builds available. I can see Java test ng pre installed application right here. And I can see that the test is currently in queue. As soon as a device gets allocated, it will start running. All right, so this was a short test, but let me just replay the video to ensure you are able to actually see what is happening during this test. Uh, we see that all the commands were executed pretty quickly. And let's just see how the test actually goes. So we have the YouTube application already installed. It will just spin up now. YouTube will open. We're going to click on the signing button, accounts button, sorry, on the top after a five seconds wait and then we're going to click on sign in and that's it now this was a basic automation how it can be done on a, a pre-installed application as well all right uh let's go through the next use case which is using gps geolocation and ip geolocation automation and we're going to do this on an ios uh, device now again what we're going to change here are the capabilities capabilities are your friend they're actually defining all the aspects of your automation uh, along with your script as well so just ensure you're actually understanding all the capabilities aspect and leveraging these capabilities really well to uh, continue with your test case now here you can see i have chosen geolocation as india uh, ien and i have also set a, a location latitude and longitude of well I, I think i have chosen new delhi i'm i think forgetting a little but yes uh we have chosen new delhi or noida as a location that is the gps geolocation i want to put so geolocation is your ip and location is your gps mocking that we're trying to do here within this test session and again it's going to be a, a, a little different here because we're going to open the browser within the app go to maps the IP info.io, uh, but the application that we're using is again the proverbial app that we started uh, our entire discussion with. So let's just quickly run this test. Test helping. Oh, let me just install my dependencies first. OK. 
Okay. Oh, now test hyphen t iOS single quickly validating. All right. Now, as we, we can see that the test suite has started running, the name of the build is Java Test NG iOS geolocations. Let's go to the dashboard. All right, so we see that we have the test running here. So the device is queued currently. I'm using iPhone 11 on iOS 14 right here i also have an option to actually stop a test case in between if i find any issues that are coming up and i also get the metadata including session id uh, test id and all the different details uh, of the test right here and again there's an option to share a specific test as we had uh, shared a build as well earlier All right, so we have our test session run and we, the test session has actually ended now. And we can see that under capabilities, we have provided the geolocation as India, which is set, and the location along with latitude and longitude, which is passed. Now, in this session, we're not clicking on different buttons, but we're di directly navigating to the browser and trying to go to maps.google.com. Unfortunately, I, I think, uh, we're not able to see the particular location, but it is uh, set as per the latitude and longitude on the device. On the other hand, we're also trying to navigate to ipinfo.io and just check that our geolocation has been set as India itself. All right, uh, now let's go through the next use case, which is image injection. No, oh, sorry. All right, image injection again we have for an Android uh, application. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do here is that there is a different application now we're using. Uh, this application actually supports camera APIs. Now image injection can only be used if you have, if your application is actually supporting uh, the camera APIs and it is trying to open a camera either to scan a barcode or click a picture or maybe scan a QR code as well. All of those aspects can be done. And here, what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, provide the app and we're going to uh, provide another capability called enable image injection as true. So this enable image injection as true will ensure that my application uh, is uh, patched and it is uh, actually able to capture the image and we're going to provide it a media URL which through which we're going to ensure that particular image that we choose is being uploaded. Now, just talking a little more about this media URL, uh, just like we upload apps on Lambda test and get this app URL, there is a media URL API that can be leveraged. Let me navigate to Postman quickly, upload media. So this is a separate API and under body, you can choose a particular image that you want to upload. Uh, and currently I've chosen this image. I can choose uh, any particular image uh, that I want and I can upload it right here. Uh, put in the name of the image. Let me actually choose some image to show you how it works. Type image, a custom ID is again something that can be used if I'm trying to use the same custom ID and I don't want to keep changing my uh, script. I can just enter my custom ID name and keep changing the media file without making changes, any changes to my automation script. Now this will again upload to Lambda test, upload the image to Lambda test and give you a media URL. Now this media URL needs to be used in this particular hook while ensuring that your image is getting uploaded. So in this uh, session, we were just going to click on camera two, click on capture and we're going to see that the image that we have uh, uploaded a dummy image with the scenery that we have uploaded that gets uh, added instead of the black image. Now, just a disclaimer that all our uh, devices, since they are in data center, they are taped with a black tape. So if you try to open any 
uh, camera on the device, you will actually see a black image. This is to ensure uh, for some security protocols. Now let's just run this test. Okay, we have our dependencies installed. npm test hyphen p Android single. We have the name of the we have the name of the build as Java test ng Android image injection. Let me navigate back to Lambda test. And you see we have a new build available. And the test is queued while the app, the device is getting located and the app is being installed. Now, this is a different app than Proverbial since it's specific for image injection that I'm using. I'm clicking on capture and it's, you can see that instead of the black image, I have a scenery which I uploaded as media URL, which came up on the device. And that is how you can actually test your barcode scanning or close your QR code scanning. Now, currently we're not doing anything else in this uh, particular application apart from uh, just cap capturing the image and saving it, right? But uh, depending on the application, depending on the workflow, it could be scan a QR code, maybe go through uh, a payments, maybe just go to a particular URL or test a deep link. Now, all of those aspects can be tested via image injection or, or QR code as well. We have captured this image. This is the one that I uploaded. Same thing. And again, in capabilities, we'll be able to see that any will image injection has been sent as true, through which I know uh, that my image injection will actually run on this device. All right, uh, let's navigate to the last use case that we have for the day, which is installing multiple applications. And let me just navigate. Now we're going to use an iOS app for it. Uh, in fact, we have multiple apps, but we're going to use test it on an iOS app. What we're doing here is we have our proverbial app already added. This is the proverbial app. Along with that, we are also passing another capability called other apps. Now, currently I've only defined one other app. Uh, this is a different application I am using right now. And this is a test app that we use internally. And uh, I have added other apps application and provided this customized custom uh, app URL. Now, apart from that, if I want uh, to install, let's say two apps or three apps. So Lambda test allows you to uh, install up to four applications in any test session. You can, since this is uh, an array, you can just uh, provide a comma and provide your additional app URLs as well and uh, proceed with testing. But for the sake of this session or this demo, we're just going to go ahead with uh, a single additional app so total two apps and in the commands you can see that we're just clicking on two buttons on proverbial app color and text proceed uh, post that we're just moving actually to the we're activating or launching uh, the other application that we have installed so in order to activate the app we're using the bundle id uh, since it's an ios however it was if, if it was an android we would have used app package and app activity to launch the application and we're checking whether the application is installed and then we're, then we're just ending the session using driver quit. All right, so let us just quickly run this session as well. Okay, we have our dependencies installed and uh, now let's just run the test. I'm just going through to check. Now, of course, all the tests that we have run uh, right now, we've gone through uh, of quite a few scenarios here. All of the, them can be done in parallel as well. All you need to do is just ensure that your XML file has specific parallels defined and they're using uh, the correct value. And through that, you can run your entire test. All right, so let me just 
start this session as well for installing multiple apps on a device. And you can see running test suit. Let's navigate back to the Lambda test dashboard. We have new builds available right here. The device is queued, uh, the test is queued currently, device is getting located. I, since there are two applications, both of them are being installed uh, and ensuring that they are available and up and running. Okay, so the test is in running state now. <clears throat> We just clicked on two buttons. Was that we actually launched a different application and we ended the session. Let's just go through the video quickly once again to see what actually happened. <laughs> so even in the commands, you'll be able to see that the first initial app that was installed, uh, we have our app installed, was that we're moving through our automation. And once we're done through that, let's say I have clicked on my last element as well. Uh, this is where I am right now. I'm just activating a different application, which is the uh, test app. So if you proceed, my, uh, the different application, the second application that I wanted to install that has installed, and I'm just verifying whether the application is installed or not and ending the session. Now, of course, I can write my scripts to ensure that I'm able to test this as well, and then switch back to the previous app as well, just by using activate app command. All right, so this is how I, uh, I think you can also install multiple apps. We have covered a lot of scenarios. Uh, now, the last item that we have for the day is actually marking your test statuses uh, to ensure you're able to you know, proceed through your test and you're able to verify them pretty quickly as well. So you might have noticed the initial tests that we ran. Mm, I'm sorry, uh, the initial parallels that we ran parallel testing. Uh, the test status or build status was actually passed. However, for the remaining tests that we have run, it's uh, not actually passed, but it is uh, uh, completed. Now, what is the difference between passed and completed? So by default, if you're not marking your test status, your test will get completed if all the commands get executed, or if even if you have had exceptional ha exception handling in your uh, test suit. So if you would have seen that we have added try catch uh, in all our test cases. However, uh, going back to parallel tests, we're also adding one additional uh, command, which is a Lambda hook, in which we're setting the test status as passed. And we're also adding a remark. This is a sample remark for a passed test. And as you can see that the test has been marked as passed, as well as I can see that there is the remark is available right here for me to understand what happened during this test. Now this remark and marking test as passed or failed becomes really, really handy. Uh, when you have long workflows and long test cases, and uh, at every single point of time when there is a failure, you can add an exception handling or uh, uh, you can add this executor and add the remark that this is the remark I want to add. Let's say this failed at a particular workflow. This failed at uh, um, the payments page. You add a, a workflow that the test field at payments page. You can also uh, add the remark and inform what were the conditions prior to the failure. So once the automation runs, you don't actually have to go through your entire video. It could be a 20 minute regression suit that you have. You can just directly ensure that uh, through this test page itself, build page itself, you are able to see that this is where it failed. So you can directly pinpoint, go to that part of the video, uh, quickly verify it, provide the device logs, command logs, or network logs to your relevant uh, team member, and uh, uh, reduce your software lifecycle time. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all aiming for, to ensure that our software is able to be pushed as quickly as possible. Uh, and along with that, there are also additional APIs uh, that Lambda Test provides, which can be leveraged. Uh, so these are the app automation APIs. Uh, now, these can be used in order to get your build details, your session details, 
uh, all your logs, command logs, APM logs, network logs for any particular session, even the video if you want to save it or share it. Uh, and these can actually be leveraged to ensure that you don't have, uh, if you just want to have your entire reporting set up somewhere else, that can be done as well. Apart from that, I would just like to quickly navigate through something really important, which is the capabilities generator. Now, uh, we went through a lot of capabilities during the entire session, right? Uh, Java test engine is something that we used. So we have created a capabilities generator uh, through which you can choose your uh, devices, different capabilities, debugging options. You want screenshot, console, true, record video. Uh, you want a particular build ID, uh, a particular test name uh, or project name, device orientation, IP geolocation that you want to use, latitude, longitude, language local testing you want to do. All of those can be added and capabilities can be created directly through this capability generator. So you don't even have to worry about actually uh, trying to figure out what is happening or where you should go or what is the capability. We also have all of this information documented and those can be leveraged as well in order to run your tests. And uh, just to navigate through uh, the TV uh, OS testing as well. So we have Apple TV, uh, we have uh, Roku TV, Roku Express, Roku Ultra, and uh, Fire TV as well, on which you can run app automation similarly. All that is happening is that the device name and platform version and platform name is changing. The rest everything can be tested accordingly as well. All right, uh, that's it from my end. And I think now we can proceed to have a quick Q&A session as well. Awesome. So everyone feel free to add in your questions. I have answered most of them as comments, but again, if somebody has anything they want to add, feel free to do so. Few of the things that I again want to highlight is related to the licensing part. So yes, Lambda test is a license based platform. It's a subscription based platform. Uh, the device availability is instant. So if you come to Lambda test, start a session, the device, like if you have a subscribe uh, plan holder, so whenever you start a session, you will get a device instantly. Our pricing is based on parallel sessions. So that means number of tests you can run at the same time. Uh, so if you are, let's say a team of five people and have subscribed to five parallel sessions, all of you can use the device simultaneously. But if you are a team of let's say 10 people are subscribed to five parallel sessions. So only five people of that, uh, like at the same time will be able to use this domain. This is for manual testing. For automation testing, there is a capability to add in queue. So if you are subscribed to let's say five parallel sessions, you can add five sessions plus nearly 150 more sessions as a queue. So the next uh, the st uh, test sessions will start from five parallel sessions. Once one session, one test gets completed, it gets automatically picked up from the queue. So you can, again, based on the speed with which you want to execute all the tests, you can subscribe to the parallel sessions. Again, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be there to help you out with your uh, licensing and everything. And uh, we'll be able to do that, right? Uh, the Lambda test kind of integrates with most of the CICD platforms that is there also integrates with a lot of project management tools and we also integrate integrates with a lot of uh, low code no code testing tools for example Tosca feel free to check out our integrations page you will get a list of all the different type of devices all the different type of tools in the same ecosystem that we kind of integrate with. Uh, another question that was related to the MFA. So yes, you can leverage Lambda test to test your uh, MFA based apps. The catch here is because during the session, because of security reason, every time you end the session, that machine gets completely wiped out, gets completely clean. So that means every time you start a new session, you would have to ensure that a MFA is uh, the process has to be repeated again. There are workarounds for this, for example, whitelisting the Lambda test IP addresses in your MFA tool. But again, these are pretty advanced features. Feel free to reach out to us and we'll be able to help you out. Right. So I see there are no more questions around this. So I just want to quickly go through a few instructions related to the 
uh, related to the testathon and also answer any questions that have been asked are related to the testathon process so let me start off with this first of all there is a important announcement the session for 2nd june has been postponed to 7th june so the 2nd june session which was on hyper execute has been postponed to 7th june because of a holiday clash uh, if you have bookmarked and added it in your calendar, the 2nd June session, again, please edit it out and bookmark the 7th June calendar. In addition, 1st June, we have added two more sessions to it. So move the earlier planned 7th June session to 1st June. That was related to analytics. And also the quiz on analytics has been moved to 1st June as well. So and first, uh, we will start off with a session by Sanjay on innovation inspired automation. Then we'll follow on with a session on analytics. That would be Lambda, how Lambda analytics works and uh, how you can leverage that for your testing. And there would be a quiz on Lambda test features, the Lambda test analytics features. Uh, now, there were a lot of questions related to the scoring mechanism of and uh, how the leaderboard works. So the scoring on the Lambda test leaderboard platform, the testathon leaderboard is dependent upon three criteria. First is how much, how many certifications you complete. So there are five product certifications that you can complete. It also depends upon the number of sessions that you attend and the duration of the sessions that you attend. So we have nine sessions overall planned. And uh, I think this is the, this is the third session that is going on and all the attendance of the session helps in the points that would be calculated for leaderboard there are also quizzes that will happen after sessions so for example today 3 pm we will start a, another quiz that would focus on mobile app testing the session that you guys have just attended right now this will help you in getting points for the leaderboard the top 10 people after all the leaderboard points have been calculated will get a chance to advance to the grand finale of the control plus t testathon now certification points it's a right now direct pass and fail based point so if you pass the certification you get 100 points if you fail there are zero points uh, right now you can only attempt once within a span of 45 days so the next certification will open up after 45 days now in case there are clash in the leaderboard then we will calculate individual answers uh, points based on individual answers that means the specific score that was earned during the certification but as of now the there is a complete 0 to 100 point system so you pass you get 100 points or for hyper execute you get 200 points so but we strongly recommend to go through all the learning material that can be provided in the website before you attempt the certification or quiz that will ensure that the answers you have answers to the, all the questions that were asked over there right? similarly the attendance uh, in the sessions also have a point score it also depends upon the number of minutes you attend the session. So from starting to end you attended you will get a higher score if you attend for let's say only a minute and go away so the point score over there would be less so overall you can earn every session 50 points same with quiz with every quiz you get around 50 points uh, again in case if there is a tie in the quiz specifically when we are calculating the uh, every days like every quiz top three ranks we will see who has submitted earliest so if you have let's say 50 points each the person who has submitted the first submitted first will have a higher ranking so again do check out the learning material beforehand now all the three criteria that we have mentioned so far certification points attendance points and quiz points will be calculated together for the leaderboard the maximum point that somebody can score would be around 1300 points now if you get stuck somewhere or need any more help feel free to reach out to these email ids that is testathon at the rate of landmeters.com uh, also check the email id is admin at the rate of send.landmeters.com and uh, sara marketing at the rate of landmeters.com in case you are missing out on lambda test certification credentials or logging into the lambda test dashboard credentials right uh, another update related to the session quiz. So the sessions, the quiz that will be happening today, it will be happening at 3 uh, p.m., 3 p.m., and it will be open till 3:45 p.m. You will have 30 minutes. 
to take the quiz there are no negative markings so in case you are not pretty sure about the answer still feel free to attempt the answer the maximum point you can earn is 50 points there are 20 questions for this uh, during when you are attempting the quiz while entering the email id please ensure that you are entering the email id with which you have registered for the testathon uh, that would be your essential.com uh, email id in case the form is not working the workaround for this is first of all check the vpn settings if there is any vpn please disconnect the vpn or maybe attempt the quiz via your mobile phone right the leaderboard and the session quiz winners will be published on the link below that we have provided uh, at every day at 7 pm and of course, uh, all the learning material that uh, we have would be available at this link, essential-testaton-23. And we strongly recommend that you go through all this learning material before attempting uh, certifications or quiz. This will help you answer the questions in a faster manner, right? Great. So if you have not bookmarked the rest of the session so far, again, feel free to do so. And also, again, uh, updating about the 7th June session. So if you have bookmarked earlier, just change your current calendar invite. Right? So yeah, that's more of it from my side on this. Um, I think uh, I've answered most of the questions. If anybody has anything more, feel free to reach out. Okay, so for individual scores, uh, we'll be sharing, let's say, certification starting today. And uh, you will be getting that over your email. So please keep a look out over there. And okay, there is another question related to quiz. If I start at 3.43, like you will be able to complete, there would be, uh, there is not an auto complete as such. Uh, there would not, not be an auto close, but uh, there would be a 30 minute time duration. Anything that you have entered within that 30 minute, uh, minute duration gets auto stored. So uh, once the test gets complete, uh, it will be there. Oh, I think there is an auto close at uh, 4, 3.45 as well. So yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, please ensure that you bookmark that 30 minutes time duration. So if you want, uh, I think the last uh, cutoff time would be to start from 30, uh, 3.15 so that you have complete 30 minutes. So at 3.45, the test gets auto, complete, uh, auto close. If you are starting at 3.43, again, you have only two minutes. Fastest finger first. Great. I think uh, there are not many questions related to app automation aspect uh, now. I think everybody's excited to get the quiz and certifications. Right. Uh, another question related to certification clear or not? Yes, we'll be replying back. As I said, uh, we'll be starting from today. If you have cleared the certification, we'll share that. If you have failed the certification, we'll share that as well. And uh, you will have another attempt to go at the certification that will come after 45 days. Again, we will send a reminder to, for that as well. Cool. Awesome. I think uh, most of the questions we have already answered. Uh, we also have an option of table in the uh, after end of the sessions. So I'll be there, Shantanu would be there, uh, a few for Lambda team members would be there. Feel free to drop by. Uh, we'll be happy to connect with you one-to-one -one and answer any questions that you may have, right? So with that said, uh, again, thank you for attending this today's session. It was really, again, thanks Shantanu as well for helping. We will look forward to everybody attempting the quiz. Bye-bye. Thank Have you so much, everyone. This was a great session. Bye-bye.